I apologize ahead of time that this is uh, in English. My only other option was to do it in Hebrew, which I'm sure was not a, as good an option. So uh, I'm the VP Advertising at AppNext, and I'm here to talk to you today about a new way, uh, a new revenue stream for your apps. So first, before I start, I want to do a tradition I have of taking a selfie with any crowd I speak to. So uh, smile, Uli, Uli Baitze? I think I got it right. Baitze, sorry. Давайте улыбнемся, поднимем руки. Коби сделает селфи. Давайте все вместе, все вместе. That was good. Another one? Okay. Молодцы. <laughs> okay, so a few words about AppNex before, uh, before I start talking about this new revenue stream. Um, AppNex, if I get the thing right, um, is a leading mobile discovery platform. We help uh, developers integrate services and users to discover services that will help them have a better day. Um, we've got eight offices uh, working with an ecosystem of around 85,000 developers, uh, either monetizing through us or getting distribution for their apps through our platform. We meet around 700 million uh, users a day and process around 50 billion uh, ad requests a month. So, Let's talk about how people are experiencing apps and using apps these days. So this is a stat that is kind of surprising for a lot of people because the overall number of installs of apps and the number of apps in the stores is growing all the time. Um, but the number of apps users are installing is going down, specifically in the more uh, mobile-first markets. So in the U.S., I think the stats in 2017 are actually close to zero new apps uh, a month per, per user. Uh, and this is understandable. The market is saturated. It's more mature. Um, there's less, you know, people already have their Uber installed, that's their favorite apps installed. So the, the newcomers are really the apps that are installing, and the growth is coming from new markets. So this is a bit of bad news if you're monetizing through um, ads that are based on mobile app installs. Specifically, if you want to keep a non-intrusive experience for your users and have mainly native ads which don't have the capability of telling a story which is good for brands. Um, on the other hand, the time in apps is growing very dramatically. So, so around, this is, the red line shows the time spent in apps out of your total digital time. So in the U.S., even 2016, the numbers in, in, uh, in 2017 are, are much higher already. Uh, close to 90% of your time you're spending in digital is in apps. So this is an opportunity to monetize. Um, but as I said again, if you're monetizing through native ad units, the branding will come in. The more time spent in digital, from digital uh, in mobile means more branding dollars coming into the uh, ad system in mobile, so you'll, you'll enjoy that, but if you do not have the ad units to show uh, a story, that you don't have video, um, you won't be able to enjoy this money and you'll just have less revenues from mobile app installs because people are installing less ads. Now, does this translate to more in-app purchases? No, I, we know this is limited. Um, just over 5% of users are currently spending money in apps uh, and in-app purchases. Um, you can see the stats here for iOS is higher, of course, in terms of the uh, average pur purchase per user. Uh, numbers are different in different countries. Uh, Android overall and uh, emerging markets are catching up. The average in-app purchase is, is uh, growing. But it's never going to be a very high percentage. You're only going to be able to monetize, although they're spending much more time in your apps, you're going to be able to monetize a very low percent through in-app purchases. So, and, and you know, mainstream ads are great, but um, first, users are less and less inclined to click on ads and install, as we see, less apps. Um, and they want to get services. They want to install the app. They want to use a specific service. Uh, and even if you get them to install an app through uh, mobile app install ads, attribution is very complex. There's a lot of uh, bad players taking uh, advantage of this. Uh, so even if you got them to install, they might be uh, injecting a click using the last click attribution model and taking 
uh, the, the attribution for this, you, know, you, won't, you won't be seeing the money, even though your ad got him to the install. Um, and, you know, as I said, there's a bigger opportunity for, for branding through video, but then the user experience uh, is not as optimal. So some companies, and, and we'll show some examples, I'll talk about some examples, are, are, are introducing new models with, our, with seamless discovery and instant usage. So one of the first companies to understand this trends early on is the Chinese giant uh, WeChat, uh, owned by Tencent, launched just in 2011, uh, quickly grew to uh, half a billion users in uh, 2015, and now is close to a billion users in the last few days. And they, what they launched in understanding this trend, they launched mini programs in uh, January 2017. And if you've been uh, lately to China, you know that all they do is they do through WeChat. So they've integrated dozens of services. You can uh, order a taxi, buy train tickets, house services, you're paying your bills, utility bills, electricity, water, gas, everything. Uh, you, you buy things at, all without leaving the WeChat app. Uh, here is an example of ordering a taxi. You, you, you click order a taxi, you get to the screen, you put your destination, you get the price and click you're gone. So this is a, a very great user experience uh, for the user, because they're on WeChat anytime, anyhow. Uh, more revenue, not ad-based that takes you out of the, uh, the experience, and uh, is a significant uh, revenue stream for WeChat. Other examples are Uber, as an advertiser, took this as a mission and understood this, and their mission is to bring the user, uh, the Uber mobile experience to other apps. So. You can, in the United app, you could, you could uh, uh, order an Uber, different chat apps allow you to do this. So this is something they understood as a company that their app is not gonna be the only center and only destination. They wanna distribute their app through other apps. Instagram lately is uh, rolling out more and more their shoppable tags. So you can shop, uh, you can tag a, a product just as you tag a person uh, and then go out to, uh, to purchase the specific item. Another thing that Facebook is doing is, let's say, they order food. So within Messenger, um, they've partnered with likes of Eat Street, Del Delivery.com, DoorDash, and the others, uh, and enable you to order food without leaving the app. Recently, uh, Google, with Google Assistant and Google Shopping Actions, basically allow you to talk to, uh, to say, hey, Google, uh, Here's an example, I, I need a up and up laundry detergent. And they say, okay, I found it on Target. You want me to add it to Google Express? And very seamlessly, you, you say yes, boom, you've bought this. Um, and this is something that Siri also allows you to, to order taxis. Uh, one of the things that uh, I found uh, interesting and uh, that I didn't, didn't even realize that not a lot of people actually use the assistance yet uh, I think it's a bit of, kind of embarrassing to walk in the street and say, uh, uh, order a taxi. Um, so very few percent actually use, even after they've experienced uh, ordering things through their assistant, keep on using this. I'm sure this is going to be going up. Uh, that's un unlike using um, the home, home assistant, so you know, the Amazon Echo. And so there people I feel much more comfortable to use services and interact with voice not like in the mobile device, but this is, of course is gonna grow. So what's the common thread here? Content and services are set to be unbundled from apps and bundled into platform solutions. So more and more people are gonna be accessing services, uh, content, not from one destination app, but from platforms that allow you to access this from different apps. So we in AppNix understood this uh, trend, and we wanted to build uh, a new category, basically, which we call service-based monetization. Service-based monetization basically means that we're not allowing any developer, not only the giants like Facebook, WeChat, and Google, to add into their offering a, a variety of different content and services, uh, helping the user basically um, make their life easier, uh, getting them the right service at the right time, and publishers can turn their app into kind of a super app like WeChat if they want, 
And advertisers can always be at the decision-making point where users have, this is an example of someone clicked in an action saying meet new people and they have the, the different options of finding love and the advertisers would always want to be there. So they want to be top of mind, they don't want their uh, competitors getting this next uh, click. So this is the service-based monetization solution we're, we're rolling out. Um, and it's really a win-win. You're turning your app into a, to a platform. You're helping your users uh, easily access their favorite everyday services. And you're generating additional revenues. So let's watch a little video on how this works. I'll explain it. It doesn't work, but we'll show you later. If anyone wants, we'll send you it with the video. So behind the scenes here, uh, what we have in play is the AppNex technology we call the AppNex timeline. The AppNex timeline takes into account over 100 signals because we are one of the most uh, distributed SDKs on Android uh, with over 20,000 apps uh, activating a day with our SDK, exposed to hundreds of millions of users. We gather over 100 signals of, of places you are, what Wi-Fi's you're connected to, what moments you're doing right now. So based on if uh, you're using a specific app, uh, if you are now uh, in, in transition, if you have your headsets connected or not, we analyze and determine, we have a machine learning algorithms that determine what moment you are, if you're waking up, if you're, you're going to work, if you're leaving work, uh, if you're exercising, if you're ordering food, if you're uh, booking a, a room in a hotel. And we know then to suggest specific actions. So this is basically an intent prediction technology. So what, what's unique about actions? It's not ad-based. Uh, it's very user experience focused. As I said, behavioral-based targeting with our prediction timeline technology. And there's a lot of variety of integrations uh, to use. So this is like an assistant mode. So we have different uh, publishers that integrate actions based on context of, of, the, of their app. So this is, a, let's say, a calendar app. And they say by the text that someone is saying dinner with Kelly here. And they will offer in the bottom here, you see hungry, find a restaurant. It could be uh, we have OEMs and operators that are putting a little widget on the home screen and offering different services. Buttons could be based on prediction of what you're doing now or different things that we see the user keeps on coming back to. So we're creating a habit for the users to use um, this widget to discover new services uh, and they could click on an all services and then get to the a list of all the different services they could use. So we're forming a habit and uh, allowing more revenue and stickiness for the, for the publisher's app. So the results page, after one clicks on a specific service, we take them to a results page. Uh, this is like for a results if you clicked on order food. Um, it's a very search-like experience. It's dynamic. Not everyone will see different things based on their preferences based on what we predict they use. They will get personal real-time offers, so we integrate with um, advertisers' APIs. So if it's a taxi, we know when is the next taxi coming and what the price is, specific promotions. Um, and a big, big part of this is we're also showing them apps they've already installed. So traditionally, most of the native ads today are focused on mobile app install and leave out a whole big potential of revenue from users that already have the app installed, but they want to use it and you get them to use it again. You drive the usage, you drive the sales, uh, but in traditional native ads, you wouldn't get any money for this. Here, advertisers understand that because if they're not going to be, the user is not going to be uh, clicking on their app, they're going to go to their competitors. We're getting many advertisers who traditionally are not spending on re-engagement ads are saying, okay, we're gonna, we own these users, we've already spent our money in user acquisition, we've brought them, we can get them to activate and, and uh, we can drive more sales via push, email, and so forth, then understanding that in this, in this uh, scenario they have no choice because they don't want their users to go to the competitors and it's a, it's a great funnel, they're showing, you know, they're giving good service for their user as well. Um, and the second phase of the product, we will have Basically, uh, instead of 
you know, service selection, it'll be product-based discovery. So instead of looking at the different services that could give you uh, an option of ordering food now, you'll be able to say what kind of food you want, uh, when, if you want delivery or takeout, and then it will give you the actual restaurants from a few service providers, and then deep link directly into that page in the service provider, and maybe do the order from this screen. So we talked a bit about why this is great for publishers, how they're helping their users, they're adding additional revenue, but why is it great for an advertiser? And here I'd like to introduce what we call the three-step intent qualification funnel. So basically we have in the first step, we either predict the intent by the timeline technology. We know he's probably going to be ordering food or booking a hotel or ordering a taxi. It could be either that or through the context. So if they're a chat app and they're talking about let's order food or they're in a navigation app and they're navigating to a destination, we could say order a taxi. So this is the first qualification phase. The second qualification is they've clicked on this specific action, order a taxi. And then the third one is they choose a specific vendor. So what we're seeing is because there's so much qualification of the intent here, no one is clicking by mistake here, um, we're seeing very, very high um, conversion to purchase. So anywhere between 5 to 10% of the users clicking here actually go on in the same session, purchase or order the service they were interested. So this is great results and we're so confident in this that we're willing to do, you know, AppNex is traditionally a bidding, bidding platform. Here we're, we're saying, you know what, we're, the results are great, pay us cost per sale. We, we, we're willing to take the risk here because the performance is, is amazing. So we're now doing more and more partnerships uh, in each one of these services because they're seeing that, you know, people are now ordering 100,000 taxis a day through AppNex. They want to be there. They have to be here. So we're talking and we're integrating more and more providers um, on a partnership le uh, level and just only, they only pay us when there's a sale. Um, here's an, uh, an example of a big text app in, uh, in the U.S that integrated us in their chat. So basically here you can see uh, an example of people talking about what movie we should see. And they're talking about a specific movie. And here you have a, a little action watch a movie or it could be order tickets. Um, as, as I said, they keep the natural chat flow. There's context plus the double opt-in, so the results here are terrific. Uh, great incremental revenues on what they had, and the performance is much, much better than what they had in their regular native ads unit. So it's close to 300% more CTR and conversion versus the native ads. And they, and they love it. They just want more and more. They're looking at more and more search words and to, to pop up this experience. Um, and, and more and more examples of this that we could share later. So kind of a summary, what's in it for me? If you're a publisher, it's a new non-intrusive revenue stream. Uh, you get more loyalty because people come back to use your app for more things than your core service. Uh, and you increase the time in app uh, because they're looking for their services for you. Uh, for an advertiser, this is super high intent interactions with your target audience. You stay top of mind and the bottom of the funnel so people are spending a lot of money to re-engage with users who have left their shopping cart and try to get them back with the same item uh, through uh, exchanges and so forth. Here, you're competing against your competitors when they're actually going to do the action. So it's, uh, it's, just, it's as if of you're, you know, you're getting someone just before they're going to the cash register. Um, and you wanna, you're becoming a part of a very user-friendly experience where um, the product is not pushed, it's uh, offered to the user based on his intent in a very uh, natural and integrated way. That's it.